When I was 11, my best friend and I signed up to attempt the one-mile swim at scout camp. Notice I emphasized the word attempt. Let me tell you a little bit about my swimming background. First of all, my mom can't swim. My dad, he knew how to swim, but he wasn't a real swimming enthusiast when I was growing up. Of course, they both wanted me to learn how to swim, but when I was just a little kid, we went to the theater and watched Jaws. That movie had a very big impression on me. So much so that I believed that every body of water had a shark in it, including the YMCA in St. Louis, Missouri, where I was scheduled to take swimming lessons as a kid. I would sit at the edge of the pool before my scheduled lessons and just hear the music in my mind. Dun 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 dun. Now listen, I really did want to swim. My friends were all swimming, but I didn't even want to get in that water. My heart would race. I would get a pit in my stomach, and I would just picture a shark coming out of nowhere to drag me down. Now, over the years, I got over my fears. I took lessons. And then when I was 11, not only did I attempt the mile swim, but I actually finished the mile swim. Yeah. We can cheer about it. It was not easy. As a matter of fact, my partner and I were the last ones to finish. We used every stroke in the book and even a few that weren't in the book. But I finished. My ability to conquer my fear of swimming has brought me all sorts of amazing fun and life-changing experiences that have filled my life with joy and adventure. But for years, I limited myself because of what I allowed into my mind. Now I can't imagine myself without knowing how to swim. It's almost as if an ocean of possibilities was calling me all those years ago, and the only barrier to me answering that call was my very own fear. And I'm grateful for parents who have always encouraged me to follow what is in my heart and for a wife who encourages me to do the same. Now, have you ever had a feeling that you wanted to do something but just never acted upon it? Have you ever had an idea that keeps coming to you over and over again, but you never decide to do anything about it? Did you ever wonder where that idea came from or where those feelings in your heart come from? You ever wonder if maybe God is trying to tell you something? I have a theory that when we have those feelings that our heart won't let go of or ideas that pop out of nowhere into our minds, they are gifts. I feel that God is guiding us. He is actually calling us. And many times when he calls It's to do something that seems about the farthest from what you would expect yourself to do. But this is nothing new to God. He's been doing it for years. He told Noah, I want you to build a huge boat, get two animals of every kind, and then ride out a storm that will wipe out the entire planet. Can you imagine what Noah was thinking? You want me to do what? But Noah answered the call, and you know the rest of the story. So think about the things that have been in your heart for a while that you may be brushing off for one reason or another. Have you ignored it because it seems impossible? Or maybe you were just never able to picture yourself doing that thing or becoming that person. Maybe even some of us have had that call where we found ourselves asking God, you want me to do what? Well, I know that listening to the still small promptings of the Lord can help you accomplish amazing things. I have proof. See, there have been a few times in our lives my wife and I have felt those feelings and heard the promptings in our hearts. Following those promptings we receive has not always been easy, but it has definitely been life-changing. I'll share with you a couple of our experiences to show how amazing the results can be when we make the decision to follow the desires that God has planted in our hearts. Rachel and I have always felt like we wanted to adopt. Even before we got married or even talked about marriage, we would have discussions about adoption. I have no doubt that God put it into our hearts, and he kept it there and fueled the fire. But we never had any idea how difficult the road would be. When we had three kids, we started doing foster care in hopes that we might be able to adopt through that program. We were told that our profile matched up with the needs of many kids. I can still remember the first two kids we had in our home, a brother and sister who were still learning to speak and English was not their first language. But love has no barriers. We loved those kids, and they loved us. But in the end, we never had an opportunity to adopt them. And so it went for years. Time after time after time, we tried to adopt with no success. And through that time, 
We had several opportunities where we were really close to adoption, but for one reason or another, we just fall through. And with each failure, more disappointment came. It was hard on our whole family, but particularly on my wife. She would cry and cry for days. And she would say, why do I have this feeling like we're supposed to adopt when we always fail? As a former collegiate athlete, I've had my fair share of experiences where I aimed high but didn't quite get to where I thought I was headed. My dreams fell short. Have you ever felt that way? You hear the call, you follow the call, but then failure comes and you start to doubt yourself? Did it really come from God? Did I really feel what I thought I felt? But God has a purpose and a plan for us that sometimes includes these failures. I remember after our fifth failed adoption, we were devastated. When we got the call that we wouldn't be able to receive the little boy we had been so anxiously waiting for, my wife literally collapsed to the floor. She took her frustrations to the Lord. She went into our closet and had a wrestle with God. She wanted answers. And this may surprise you, but God did not give her answers. But what he did give her was peace. At first she said, I do not want peace. I want answers. In the end, she ended up settling for the peace the Lord gave her. About a month after the failed adoption call, we were licking our wounds, trying to get our confidence back. We were sitting waiting for our kids' band concert to start when Rachel received a different type of phone call. I remember looking at her because she started sobbing. And I said, what's wrong? What happened? Who is it? And she looked at me through tear-stained eyes and said, they have our baby. They have our baby. And the next day, we met our son, Jaden. There he is, sitting on my lap outside the St. Louis temple where we were sealed. And would you believe that the same day that my wife sat in that closet pouring her soul out to the Lord, that very day God gave her peace is the same day that Jaden was born. When we follow what the Lord has put into our hearts, there may be challenges, but amazing things can happen. And I can't begin to name all the many blessings and valuable lessons we learn from this process. Patience. Endurance, patience, love and support for one another, dependence on God. And did I mention patience? Now, Jaden has taught us patience. <laughs> and he has been such a blessing in our lives. And he's the one that God always had just for us. He is the reason why we had those feelings in our hearts so long ago. Now we've added two more boys to the bunch. They add to the chaos and the love. This is my wife with all eight of our adorable kids. And yes, this is our family. I still can't believe we have eight kids, right? <laughs> when I go shopping, people see how much food we have and they say, oh, you guys having a party? Nah, we got eight kids and it ain't no party. <laughs> but people often ask, are they all yours? I never hesitate, yes. They are all mine because we know that God has placed each of them in our care for a time and a purpose. Our family is a result of recognizing and following promptings, even when that prompting is telling you to do something different than what you expected. We are blessed and love most every minute that we spend together. A couple years ago, we had a feeling to start a family band and a vlog, and we absolutely enjoy playing and working together as a family now. I went from touring the world with a boy band to singing back up for my little 10-year-old daughter and my boys. And as we started to get more serious about starting a YouTube channel, we realized we needed a good camera. I had received a message from an old friend who had just started working for a camera store. My wife got in touch with her to see what type of discounts were available. Our friend asked what our budget was. At the time, we really had no budget. We were just doing our best to follow what was in our hearts. I was trying to do what we felt God was telling us to do. Our friend spoke to the owner and came back with an offer we could not refuse. They decided to gift us two cameras. 
Amazing, right? So we started videoing. We started doing the Christmas season as part of the social media campaign, hashtag light the world. Maybe some of you have heard of it. We decided to video our family singing a different Christmas song each day, and we shared it on Facebook. It was a blast, and it helped us stay in the true Christmas spirit, and people started watching. After Christmas was over, we decided to keep, our, keep documenting our lives and officially launch a YouTube channel doing videos with our family band and doing almost daily vlogs of our crazy family life. The Lord inspired us to take a subtle approach, but not to be shy about our love for Him and our Savior Jesus Christ. Pretty soon, we had a catchphrase. We started saying, spread sunshine at the end of every vlog we posted. And that's when we entered a contest to get a job working in Cancun as professional vloggers. Yeah, get this, our job would be to experience all of the awesome sites, resorts, restaurants, all of that in Cancun and vlog about our experience. And they would pay us $10,000 a month. All of those things would solve a host of problems for us and probably help our channel grow faster than we could imagine. That had to be what God wanted us to do, right? So we entered the contest and we made it to the top 100 out of over 8,000 entries. Now, as part of being the top 100, we were told to purchase passports for everyone in our family just in case we made the finals and had to fly to Cancun. Then we didn't make the finals. But let me show you how God works. See, he blessed us to make it that far in the competition so we would buy those passports. Because we would never have spent $1,000 on passports if we weren't going to use them. So he put it into our hearts to actually use these passports that we bought. More than taking a vacation, we wanted to make our trip a service trip. But where to go? We felt inspired again to call our friend who goes to Guatemala frequently. He helped us find potential service opportunities down there. And we also kept feeling like we needed to use our talents as a family band to spread sunshine where we were down there. Wait, did you just hear what I said? I just said we were thinking about taking eight kids and a bunch of band equipment to Guatemala for two weeks. That is absolutely crazy on so many levels. First of all, have you ever taken eight kids anywhere? How did that work out for you? Picture all of these people on a plane over the Gulf of Mexico for two and a half hours together at the same time, and that's just the beginning. There are so many things to worry about while you're traveling. Also, how would we pay for it? We did not have a budget for this. <laughs> Remember, the original plan was for us to be flown to a foreign country and to get paid for it. Now we were paying for it. And to top it all off, there was only one period of time that worked for all of us to go. So we only had a couple of months to pull it all together. We definitely felt like we had bitten off a little bit more than we could chew. See, God's plan was not exactly working out like what we thought. But no matter, no matter what opposition came, no matter what our concerns were, we were being blessed to see how God calls and qualifies ordinary people to do extraordinary things. It's like he was helping us find our way through the dark to get where he wanted us to go. But when you're following what God puts into your heart, he will help you make your way through it. So God helped us raise funds. We did three concerts in our home for friends who supported what we were doing. They donated lots of money. But even with their amazing donations, we were short on the funds to make it happen. So God started blessing our YouTube channel to grow. At the time, we decided to go to Guatemala. We had around 20,000 subscribers. We had taken just over a year to get that many subscribers. And we never even thought it was possible to do that. But within two months, we had gone from 20,000 to 90,000 subscribers. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. With that type of explosive growth, our income for that month tripled. Just enough money to help us pay for the rest of the expenses for the trip and to cover our bills for while we were gone. That was definitely no coincidence. And most importantly, we were able to do the thing that he wanted us to do when we started this journey, and that's use our talents to serve others. <laughs> In the videos, it all looks so easy, but I assure you that behind the scenes, it's filled with tons of hours of hard work. And even with over 200,000 subscribers now, 
there are also those feelings still that come of discouragement and self-doubt or the many challenges that we run up against or the many failures that we have. But no story is worth telling or life is worth living without trials and challenges. Christ himself is the prime example of that. Along our journey, it seems that every time we take a step to do things that God has put into our hearts, God has blessed us in ways we could have never imagined. It's made us closer. Our children have had experiences that open their eyes to a different side of life than what they're used to. We're beginning to understand why God gives us our talents and how God can use us to bless the lives of others. And we're learning that as we serve others, we are truly the ones being blessed. We are learning to recognize the call of the Lord and seeing the results of following Him. So, do you remember that thing I asked you to think about earlier? That thing that God has put into your hearts? I challenge you to act on it today. And if not today, act on it this week. Because you never know. You never know where it will take you. And it just may change your life. I know it has mine. Thank you.